Hey guys, TNT here. Um, this is the next step in the video doing the uh, cabin modification for the Sezen 310. Um, I'll take and go ahead and show you over here. I've got six seats just about 100% complete. Um, the only thing we're lacking here is just the uh, seat belts. And, and as you can see, it's pretty much a finished up bucket seat there. We got the upholstering in. You know, we had the backs made and the side pieces, and you know, the bottom framework and everything all put together. But I'm going to give you a rundown on how I did this. Uh, this is surprisingly very cheap to do. Um, the first thing I did is I looked inside the cabin and said, okay, how big do I need to make these? So I did some measuring, come up with some figures, and cut out some paper patterns of what I wanted. Now, if you notice here, they're folded. This one here is the seat bottom pattern, but there's two folds in there. Well, what I did is I cut out my pattern too big. I cut out my back pattern the same way. And what I did is I fitted them together and just kind of looked at them. Does that look right? And then I folded it. Does that look right? And then what I was satisfied with, I went with that size for the bottom for the pattern. Um, I did not make the pattern for the seat bottom exactly the way I wanted them because I did not want the front of the bucket right here underneath. I didn't want this underside of, this, of the uh, framework to show. So I shortened up the bottoms just a little bit. But utilizing the same pattern, I went to uh, Walgreens and they just happen to have this and it's like a Depron foam. It's black but um, you can use white Depron. It doesn't matter. But uh, it was in the uh, section where you buy pens, pencils and all that stuff. And it was a foam board, had the uh, paper on each side, and, and it just peeled off like crazy. It, just, it was just so easy, it just come right off. And then when I, once I got it peeled, I noticed there was a smoother side, and a side that was more porous than the other side. So, the next step I did, so I took my pattern, obviously, and I transferred it over to the foam, cut out six backs, six bottoms. And then I said, okay, now I need something to hold them together with. So I kind of hand drew a pattern. And you can see there's there's several different lines on here. And all that was is I overdrew, cut it out, held it up there and said, okay, this is what I like. So if I can get the missus here to help me hold, I'll show you how I figured that. And she'll hold the back there for me. Just hold it up in place. Well... And then what I did is I cut out my pattern and I said, okay, that looks like a seat. So I just went with that. Um, for the sides, I made uh, 16th inch plywood. I just stacked up a, you know, some stock 16th inch plywood, drew the pattern onto it. I, I literally just wrapped these things up in tape. Took a hacksaw, cut off all the excess wood I didn't need, and then took, literally took a Dremel and shaped it all in one stack. So I come out with 12 equal pieces, which worked out really nicely. And then the, once I had that done, then I cut the backs. You know, as you can see here, see if I can get a little better light on it. I cut the back out, cut the bottoms out. Now the bottom doesn't have any covering on it, which is fine. You won't see, see that ever again. Um, Excuse me. But once I had all my pieces cut out, I took all my backs, all my sides, everything. I made sure everything was sanded as alike as possible. Um, the painting process, once I got all the pieces made and formed together, now as you can see, like this right here, this is seat back number six, seat part number six. I labeled them all because I want everything as closely matched as possible, tops and bottoms. Now, how did I make these padded seats? Well, I had some scrap foam laying around that I pack radio systems and stuff with. I said, well, this stuff's too thick, but I found some piece that I had that was black, if she'll grab that, over there behind the wall. And I said, well, this is a little thinner. I took my material, kind of held it over a piece of wood, smashed the material down over it, you know, and everything like it, like it was a complete product. But I found, you know, had this really thin foam right here. It's just, you know, it, it's a little spongy, but it's not much. It's... You know, but I just cut out the pieces I needed. Took some spray glue, which this is my favorite thing in the world right here. 3M77, best stuff in the world. Um, once I had everything sanded and matched up, numbered which way I wanted the seats to be built, 
laid down all my pieces, spray glued them, tacked them all down, took scissors and carefully cut off all the excess on the foam tops, you know, backs and bottoms. And then uh, the next step I did with that, well actually the missus here did that step, um, we colored these. Now that was the, that was the fun trick. Paint, it wasn't really a concern. Um, as you notice, they're black. But she did all the blacking, and all that was is she took a uh, permanent marker and a piece, you know, we laid it on a piece of glass so we don't like getting stuff all over our table. Um, had one of these old king size permanent markers, and she literally just painted them all up. You know, just went over them, got them painted, there you go. Um, the step that we proceeded to after that is we cut out the material. We went down to uh, Joanne Fabrics and found just this cheap um, polyester blend, but it's it flexes in many different directions. You can stretch it this way. It'll, I mean, it stretches that way. It stretches this way. It's just an omnidirectional flex, and it cost dollar eighty three, I think, for about a half a yard of it. But it's the gray that I wanted to match the interior. Um, this foam board was what a two by three foot piece mm -hmm. or something like that but some of this was used on other interior pieces too and that was like 319 so as you can see so far in this model doing this interior I have less than you know with with the paints that we did use um, what probably ten dollars so far in this interior and now the only thing left to do is I need to build the seat belts Get and then glue all the backs and stuff into place, and then you know scrap wood pedestals to hold the seat up off of the floor in each row. You know, front row up this high, second row, third row, and then we're on to the next step, which is enjoying what we uh, did. So let me go ahead and lay this camera out here, and I'm going to show you a little process that I've done. Um, some of the guys in an RC forum I belong to were really curious about how I am going to accomplish some of this. So let me get my camera set up here. Get my little camera set up on the dots here. And I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how I did that. Um, several years ago I got a hold of a whole big box full of this upholstery thread. Um, just happens if it's in the right collar. I know it's going to be hard to see on the video but um, I literally just stretched out long pieces. Let me sit down here. It made it a lot easier. And what I did first is I didn't get my needle out. Um, if I, if I I'm, I'm not going to do the needle thing. Um, she was getting me a needle. I literally took took all my seat backs, stuck it into in into the uh, upholstery this way, and up. And let me back up real quick here. I forgot to tell you about this. Once I had the foam and everything all formed on here and ready for the covering, all I did to put the covering on was low temp hot glue um, and 3M77. I took each seat back and each bottom individually, cut me out a section of material that you've seen over there that I was stretching, that's the size I used, run the grain of the fabric vertical, same direction on the bottom so the lines will meet, you know, the line of the fabric comes this way and line of the fabric will go that way in the bottom and I just stretched it around and just carefully glued all the way around first now this is what was the experimental one I thought maybe I okay maybe I don't have to wrap the bottom but I couldn't find out yeah it's better but uh I just left the excess I cut my corners out down here because the seat side is going to hold that together and hide all this, you know, or not seat sides going to hold that together, but the seat sides that hold the back and bottom pieces together, it's going to hide this area. So I just cropped the corners, rolled it up on the back, and um, I'll show you on one of the seats that's completed. She'll give me a back off of one of them, um, the completed back. But and basically just stretch the fabric over, being careful not to really pull it too hard around the corners of the foam to get a real drastic. Um, edge. Now you can see the first one I tried which is this one. This is the first one I tried. 
You can see I pulled it a little too tight, and you notice this, it, the other one looks a little thicker. Gives you more of a uh, deep, you know, thicker, cushiony look to it. So this is the actual one that's going to be used. This is the test piece, so you can see the difference there. Um, but the way I uh, did it, I, like I said, I just cropped the corners. Small line of glue here. Had that spray tacked on there. I only spray tacked the foam. I did not spray tack the fabric in this, putting the seats on. Because all they had to do is just be held in place just a little bit because it's going to get hot glued all the way around. But, uh, put my line of glue down there and I literally just folded it over and just let it set. And then I come up here and did the same thing. Put a little line of glue from, you know, the flat spot up here. Fold it over, let it set, and then just little by little just started pulling and working the fabric with a little tacks of glue until I got it all worked around and trimming the excess with the scissors until it's complete. And then that got me to the point where I could just get to the next step of the uh, upholstery look. Because um, I think everybody could agree. Now you can see where I tore the strings off of the test piece, but which one which one looks better? That's the question. There, there's no doubt this one does look a lot better than that one. So, you, would would you want the plain Jane seats, or would you want something that looks like it has a little bit of an upholstered look? Well, that's what we went for. And now this is how I accomplished the upholstered look. I first marked out from each side how far I wanted my upholsters to look. You know what what width I wanted, and uh, that was the reason for my test piece. So I can sit here and figure out, okay, I want it this far from each side, and then just went from there. But uh, I took my string that I already cut, and what I did is I threaded it onto a needle, and I started from the back here and poked it up through at an angle this way and literally tied it on. Just tied it on nice and snug. Um, the one thing I made sure I did is I come up through the hot glue that was on the back that held the, the part of the seat. That was the only place I did any sewing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of a seamstress knot here. I've got to give my mom mom some uh, credit for that because she was, she was a professional seamstress all of her life. Um, so yes, uh, us boys could definitely sew as good as the girls. Um, let me get that just dried onto there. And let's say that is tacked on, but once I took my uh, ruler, you know, measured in, put me a little dot, did the same thing over here, I knew where I wanted to put that thread. And all I did is I took the thread, and I just gave it some tension, and I pulled it up over, just like that. Now, if you can see that, can you see that? Can you see that? <coughs> Okay, and what I did is once I got tension on like that, I held up just like this, wrapped my finger a few times, and I just really yanked on that thing because if it's tied on down there, it's not going to make a difference. And then what I did is I come all the way back to where I started just like that, took a little hot glue. I'm not very good left handed on some things, so making sure I kept that string pulled nice and tight and just put a thin layer over top of that whole thread all the way up and down. Because you're never going to see that again anyway. Wet my finger and just really pressed it down. Now this is one reason you like to low temp because number one, it won't melt the foam. Number two, it won't burn you when you go to help cure that. And then just trim off your thread. Now, This not being the right piece, but the test piece. You'll see a little wrinkle at the bottom. But there you go. That's exactly how I did all the seat backs and the seat bottoms. Just sit, put it, put a needle and thread through here. Tied it into a good knot because the fabric won't tear. Because it, with the glue and the fabric, it gives it support. And my other half can tell you, when I put these threads on, I was pulling on them. <laughs> Because I wanted them down to the point where I wanted them to look very presentable. Now this one here I didn't pull on as much, but you can see just a little bit of pull. Can you see that detail? Mm-hmm. That little bit of just what I pulled there. There you go. 
Then I just did the same thing on this side, making sure that they look even, straight, and everything before I um, tacked them all down. You know, you don't want, obviously, this thread off this way or too far away. I just eyeballed it to come up straight because if, if you make one side look straight to the other and then you go to put it down, you know, it's going to give you that look. Now, to line up the seat backs and bottom, if you'll hand me number six over there, um, that was just a little little trick. Uh, here, here, here. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, too, I did take some uh, Dove Gray Monaco and cover the back, give that vinyl back look before I assembled the seats. And you can see that assembling the seats was easy. Um, I didn't want my seat backs, by the way, sitting straight up. It looks too m much unnatural. I did lean them back a little bit, so I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it, it does have a slight back lean to it. But uh, I, once I got the thread on for one part, I placed it in my bucket slid this piece up to it and then took the point of a magic marker you know something that was going to show up and in this case I do have a gray one and I followed the line in just like that and got that point down and just, right, just where it touched and just kind of lifted a little bit and that left me a mark as you can see like this to where the lines are going to line up now I made sure before everything got together that there was play back and forth on every seat back every seat bottom because you have to allow for the thickness of that material plus if you have your lines off just a little bit it gives you a little shifting room to line them up and then essentially the same thing in the bottom sew it onto the back edge where you're never going to see it again where it goes up against the back give it a coat stretch that string out tie that string on there and I she can tell you I was tugging on it and then there you go one little tutorial about how to build a seat cheap and easy um, from start to finish you know her and I put we do have some hours in it but for us it was a lot of figuring out um, we did a lot of Google did a lot of uh, other things you know just looking at picture after picture after picture found so many seat styles, so many of this, so many of that, and it's like, oh my gosh, where does it stop? And we finally decided on a thing. But now, there's one thing missing from these seats I do want to tell you about, and that's called a seat belt. Now, this is an easy thing to do. I'm going to get my glass out here because it keeps everything off the table. Um, <coughs> you, need, you need the magic marker. Did you put it back? Oh, here it is. You'll need that marker. I'm using part of the tuna can. It's a very thin metal, very easy to cut with scissors. Um, she can tell you, my friends can tell you too, I'm, I'm a man who's got scissors for every occasion on the hobby. I got certain ones I use for covering, I got certain ones I do for this, certain ones I do for that, and if I catch somebody else using them, I, I, I go nuts. But uh, this was just a quick test. I cut a strip of metal as wide as the strip I got. Now the strip I found, I've had for a long time, a couple of years. Um, it's great for making scarves around pilots' necks, stuff like that. But it's basically what you find in a doctor's house. It's a uh, wick, some sort of wick stuff they put in wounds to help suck the crap out of your wounds. You know, when you have a bad puncture wound or something like that, they can pack it and it helps draw stuff out. But uh, there you can just buy some cheap lace, the, the width that you want. But this is like 20 foot of this stuff in here that the doctor gave me because I had a, uh, a wound on my arm one time and they had to go in and pack it. So I just saved, saved it. I don't remember where it was at, to be honest with you. I think, I think it was around here somewhere. But anyway, they had to pack it in there until it healed up, you know. When I said, well, well, it looks like a seat belt anyway. So I cut me a strip, the width of the, uh, whatever you get, the lace or whatever. Cut it extra length. And actually cut it too long back here because the way I attached it is I just basically took a pair of needle nose, put a little bend in it, stuck the lace in there, crimped it on. That's it. 
Now, there's one thing that's missing off of this seat belt that I am going to try to do. And it's just a little detail work because I'm not going to be happy with it. On this side of the seat belt is always the, the pull side where you tighten things up. What I'm going to do is just, before I even put it in there and crimp it, I'm going to make sure it's straight. And what I'm going to do is leave it overlap like that and then just take my heat iron from my Monaco, flatten it all out good. As you can see, this is hard to cooperate now. And then I'm going to crimp it on. That way, on this end, you have the little end that's the pull. And I'll just carefully cut it straight, lay it over, put a little bead of glue on there, and it'll look like that sewn end, hopefully. Um, I'm sure going to give it my best shot. But now, here's the other problem. Here you have a seat belt. Let's go ahead and pull this bottom out, and I'll show you how to go. I'm not going to be real particular. I am going to position them inside of the seats about where I think they would go. I'm just going to put a little dot of hot melt on there. Then I'm going to put the seat back in. And literally, I'm just going to flop these belts onto the seat, both sides, and just barely tack glue it into place. Paint this in silver. Sound, sounds like a good idea, right? Now, what do you do with this? You don't want a white seat belt. You don't want to you, you want it to blend. You want it to look like you put some effort into it. Remember the marker? Amazing thing. Permanent markers sometimes make your best paint. Just paint that puppy up. Just paint paint your whole bunch of this stuff up even before you cut them. Just paint paint up like a foot or two of it. Who, who knows? Whatever you think you may need. Just go on one side hit the other side now I'm not going to go too elaborate if it gets on your fingers, oh well, it cleans off with alcohol um, if you work where I work, you get used to getting ink all over you all day, all night long anyway um, but there you go now it didn't turn out black black, but it's got kind of a gray hue to it and that should give me a nice blend Let's lay out in there. You're gonna to have to give it a couple minutes to dry in some markers, but but there you go. That looks more like a seat belt should. What do you think? But anyway, but now to assemble the rest of the seat, I'm gonna tack in the seat belts, lay them off to the side like you see me do that. The back will get glued into place first um, to help get all this adhered and good. I'm going to be real careful with some five minute epoxy. I'm going to use just a little zigzag of hot melt in there. Get that placed in. Put me just a little light bead of five minute up around here. Go go past the edge of the monaco, and then literally I'm just going to take and each one and just hold down around that whole edge until it is fully cured. So that's going to take some time. I'm not going to demonstrate that to you, but that will give you an idea. And then the same thing here. This bottom is just going to be hot melted because once I get the pedestals, which is just going to be two square rails under here, the thickness as I need, you won't see that. So I'm not going to worry too much about covering this because you're not going to really be able to look into that cabin and see into that edge. So, but you know, there you go. Makeshift seats for about 10 bucks. Have a good one, guys.